Hey everyone, in the video today, I just wanna quickly show you some ways that we can process color, particularly when you have a really nice, vibrant sunrise or sunset. Um, often these can be some of the hardest to process because there is so much dynamic light and a large range of rich color tones. There's so many different ways that you can take the file, but it's also very easy to kind of ruin the file as well because of all that color that we have available to us. So I've just opened up here in Photoshop. Uh, and if you use Lightroom, this workflow is pretty similar as well. So don't worry about that. Just a nice sunset recently at Milford Sound. And you'll see here, this is a focus stack. So the files are just progressing through there with the stack. Um, regardless of that, I'm just gonna select all of them, Command A. And first thing I'm going to do before we jump into the color is just quickly balance out the dynamic range. You'll see here, I've shot for the highlights, so look at my histogram. I'm just starting to clip the highlights, which is gonna be that area there. And then we've got all the dark tones down below. You'll see though, the reason why I shoot this way is I have a large shadow recovery, so I'm able to pull up all those uh, darker tones there, everything's revealed. So what we're gonna do is just balance out that dynamic range quickly. I'll bring up the exposure. Shadows can come up a touch. Now we'll bring the highlights down a little bit about there got to keep in mind with highlights it is natural for there to be a highlight i'm not going to recover that wholly that's a normal highlight to have if we recovered it too much it starts to look artificial that doesn't look right it's just too recovered so i'll let it partially blow out it's going to be subjective where you want to end up i'll just leave it there for now okay we're going to do the stack and then we'll come back and just quickly do the color so probably go a touch brighter and one thing I'm going to show you now straight off the bat though is the color profile up the top here look at the difference if we change this to landscape bang huge difference we'll go back to the Adobe color now I'm not saying there's a right or wrong here there's vivid as well that you can look at but sometimes it's actually just a nice quick boost to go straight to that landscape color profile and it's going to just instantly just ramp up the colors um, especially if you have a file that doesn't have much color in it as well. So anyway, we'll leave that for now. I'm just gonna quickly open this one up. We'll do our stack and then we'll go in. And I wanna show you some different ways that you can look at the color and really get a better sense of depth in the file. So to do the stack, I'm now just going to drop these one on top of the other. So we've got multiple layers here, dropping that one on top of that one. You see the layers building up and now the last one Drag it over, drop it in. All right, so they're all stacked up and then I'm just gonna select all, holding shift and clicking them. And now we say edit auto align. I leave that on auto and I push, go for it to push okay. This is aligning it up now. So if there's any differences as there will be because of focus breathing and I was handheld, so there's gonna be some slight movement. It's aligned it. And now we say edit auto blend, stack images, push okay. Now it's gonna stack it all together and hopefully now we'll have that infinite depth of field, tack sharp front to back. And the reason why I had to focus stack here was I was just so low and close to that foreground. I just wasn't able to get the depth of field even with a narrow aperture. So now that's been applied. And if we have a look at the file now, you can see that we're nice and sharp down the bottom there. And then in the background as well. Perfect, so there was no problems. Handheld focus stack, so that's all blended. We're gonna just flatten that image now so we've got one layer and then I'm going to duplicate that by pushing uh, command J just so I've got a fresh layer to work on so if we perhaps make a mistake or whatever we can just delete the layer. Now we're going to go back to camera raw or if you're a Lightroom user go back to Lightroom. Let's start to look at the color specific stuff. So obviously we had a very warm beautiful just epic sunset. Um, now the colors that you bring home here you can take this in a million different ways one of the first things you can do we've done the profile already but now it's the temperature and tint you see if you cool things down look how dramatically you can change the entire feel and emotion of the image if we warm it up same thing again so that's just your temperature and tint here now, sometimes in an image you might have way too much magenta you want to dial it back go for a more natural less magenta um, or you want to ramp it up again. This is all subjective and Yeah, just different images are going to lend themselves to different color tones So that's one of the first things that you could adjust For this image here. I'm actually I feel like 
I'm liking the separation of tones, and this is the main lesson I wanted to show you guys is in the processing, the main thing that I like to teach to create a sense of depth through the frame is to adjust four individual things. It's the, the light, the texture, the color, and the contrast, LTCC. Let me explain that now quickly. The light, if we have a variance in light from front to back, instantly gonna have a sense of depth. Now we already have somewhat of a variance of light naturally anyway, that should be your aim when you're in the field. But see, we've got the highlight back here. So it means in the distance, we have brighter tonality than in the foreground, that's great. One way that I could emphasize that further is with an adjustment brush, which I'm on now, and just bring up some of the exposure all back here, in, just in general. So now I've got that the brighter light in the distance, and that's what I want. I want people to travel into that background. The other thing I mentioned was texture. So remember LTCC, light, texture. We want more texture, more detail in the foreground than in the background. Again, you'll probably do that with your composition depending on what you frame up in the foreground, but I'll often myself go in and increase te texture, sometimes a little bit of clarity, sometimes even sharpening, and just ramp that up in the foreground. So I'll just do texture, I might even do whites. You'll see that, see it's just really emphasizing those tones down there, the whites, like so. In the background, the opposite. I'm generally not trying to bring out too many details in the sense that I don't want them overly sharp. That removes the illusion of depth, all right? Now, the color, light texture, color. Let's look at a way, can we get a variance in color tone so we don't just have a file that's all warm or all cool? We've already got it going on now. You can see in the sky, there's a beautiful transition of cool and warm. One of the best ways you can emphasize that is in the color grading. Warming up the highlights, which we'll do now. See that those highlights just really warming up. But then the opposite with the shadows and potentially the midtones, cool them down. Watch this, if we bring that wheel in the grading to the blue, and we start to cool, watch the foreground now. Anything in the shade, the shadow, is getting much bluer, much cooler. This just gives us a nice, contrast in the color. You've got cool and warm now. So for argument's sake, we might leave that there. And then let's have a look at the midtones if we cool them partially. You might even do the opposite. You might warm them up. It's obviously completely up to you. The key, and I guess the lesson is, just have a variance in the color tones instead of everything being warm. I, I like that. I like having the warmer highlights, the cooler shadows, the mids will leave a little bit cooler as well. I'll turn the grading on and off that's off, back on, see the sky in particular, grading on and off. It's just emphasizing that natural contrast that we had. The last one is the contrast. So light texture, color, contrast. The way nature works is anything off in the distance will have less contrast. The tonal range or what a painter might call the value will decrease into the distance. And what that means is basically the, the depth of the blacks, the dark tones should not be as deep in the far distance as it is in the foreground. Look on the left hand side here. We're seeing a somewhat natural gradient going on already. You've got very dark darks there. Off to the right, see it's not as dark. And then back here again, less dark, no black anymore. So as you progress forward through the frame, you should have a greater tonal range, deeper darks in the foreground, less in the back. Now what happens in photography is the raw files, it doesn't really show that as well. And then very quickly with some of your processing, you might accidentally start to remove that natural gradient and sense of depth. So one way I like to bring that back is again, using the adjustment brush. And I might bring up the shadows and blacks, for example. And what I'm gonna do is just anything back here in the distance, I'm just lifting those dark tones, the shadows and blacks. I'm making them lighter and that helps emphasize the depth, create the sense of depth. Another one is the, the dehaze, I rehaze by going left. You can see what that's doing there. Now I might just overdo it slightly just for the sake of the lesson. So light, texture, color, contrast. If we do it before and after, that's where we were. 
that's where we're heading. The last thing I'll do now is in regards to light, going back to the light. Remember I said, let's, let's progress from dark to light. We need to also keep that in mind for the top part of the frame. So I'll use a brush here and bring the exposure down and just the top half, I'm going to darken just like so. I'll even bring the highlights down a little bit up there. And now in the foreground, I'm just gonna emphasize that further, probably just contrast this time, just to make sure we've got much darker in the front. When I say much, I'm obviously not talking about, this is all it's almost subconscious, some of this tonal adjustments here. And then for that nice light back there, let's do a new brush and we're just going to warm it up. Bright, warm. So I've done a little bit of exposure, a little bit of warming with the yellow and magenta and then a touch more dehaze just to really emphasize the glow of light just back there for us, like that. I think one last way that we might even just separate the mountains a little bit more from the midground here is one more line of rehaze just through the middle there like that. Let's adjust that. Let's see, there we go. Now, the important part in the processing is what I call the marination process. This image here potentially is 90% complete, but I think it's so important in your workflow to walk away and leave it for some time. Could be an hour, could be a week, and you know, who knows, totally up to you. And just come back with fresh eyes and reassess everything. And you'll probably find that you might wanna make some further adjustments either way. You might wanna warm it up, you might wanna cool it down. Who knows, every image is gonna be different. An image like this with big dynamic light and color range will probably, in my opinion, need you know a good couple of visits just to make sure you're happy with the direction it's going in. It's very easy to go maybe over the top on these types of files. Another thing I've even noticed now in saying that is look at our midtones. We've got a lot of midtones here. So a lot of the image is just a midtone, not very strong dark. So there's a little bit of a highlight obviously here. But one thing I might do is jump in the curves, grab the darks, and just pull those down. You see what that's doing there now? See the histogram, look at the file. I don't wanna go overboard because then we'll lose that depth in the background, but just a, maybe a little bit darker there. And then if I bring the lights up, that's just bringing up. So this is basically a mid-tone contrast adjustment, like so. So let's just do a before and after. That's where we started. That's the direction we're moving in. It's so subtle and simple. The whole point is just leading the eye through the scene, creating that sense of depth. Again, this is not 100% complete, but hopefully this has just given you a little bit of food for thought and given you a way to really think about your processing. What was the tool I used? I only used an adjustment brush. All of these little masking adjustments were all with the same tool. That's turning all of those local adjustments off. That's having them back on. That's the main tool I use and it's highly effective in going in and adjusting the image in localized zones instead of globally. I have put together a, a much longer course on this teaching method using that LTCC light texture color contrast um, and it includes all the raw files as well. So just check the link below if you might be interested in that. It goes for a few hours and I really break it down nice and slow and across a variety of different scenes. Just teaching that principle there, how we can get that depth and lead the eye through the frame. So there's our adjustments. That's where we were. That's where we're at. It's all about being subtle. It's not big, massive global adjustments, but smaller, subtle local adjustments that add up and just help us bring back that depth in the file and, and lead the eye through the frame. Thanks for viewing guys, and I'll uh, hopefully see you in the next video.